Exactly. But you know, it's all about new technology, exciting new stuff. You know, a lot of racing series, everybody drives the same car. Le Mans racing, it is all about different kinds of cars. And they are pushing more into new areas of uh, technology, both uh, on the chassis front, also on the powertrains. Uh, one of the most exciting new cars coming up next year that we were talking about last week is the Delta Wing Racer. We want you to check this thing out again. Now, that's not a three-wheel car. It's a four-wheel car, but very narrow in the front, very wide in the back. Uh, this is going to be on the grid next year at Le Mans, hopefully, uh, as part of a new uh, program there called a garage 56 where they let new advanced technologies race uh, outside of the traditional classes uh, of the series. Uh, with us now on the phone is the designer of this car, actually via Skype, Ben Baldy from Indianapolis, Indiana. Thanks for joining us today, Ben. Thanks, Gary. It's good to be here. So last time we talked to you a couple years ago in the Chicago Auto Show, you guys had a single seat version of that car that you were trying to sell to the Indy Racing Series. Uh, they decided to go with something a little more traditional as their new spec chassis start next year. Uh, you stuck with it, though. When did you decide, hey, why don't we just make it a two-seater and turn it into a sports car? Well, uh, the, the, the concept, I suppose, is very robust, and uh, I, I believe that uh, the, the gains that come from... Um, Low drag and lightweight and high efficiency um, really can be applied to any form of motorsport. And so, uh, when we realised there was an opportunity to um, put the car in a series like uh, Le Mans and uh, run out of competition, um, you know, it was a, it was an obvious choice for us. And suddenly, we had a, a place to showcase this technology. Now, tell me about the concept here, because people look at this car and they think one of two things. One, wow, that's the coolest looking race car I've ever seen. Or two, huh, reminds me of the three-wheel ATV the kid down the block from me broke his neck on back in the 1980s. I mean, the idea of the one, the narrow front, wide rear kind of goes against conventional thinking of uh, stability in a four-wheel vehicle. So if you could kind of explain how this works dynamically, because it looks so much different than anything other than maybe a drag racer or a Bonneville uh, salt flat uh, top speed car. Um, I, well, I guess that um, uh, the technology is unexpected. It, it goes against conventional wisdom. Nevertheless, uh, there's a, a huge opportunity here to lower the drag. Right. I guess innovation is, in fact, the, uh, the narrow front track. And whilst it may feel like that's uh, um, perhaps uh, something that would lack stability, it would only lack stability if the central gravity appropriately positioned and that's what we found when we moved the central gravity back between the widely spaced driving wheels but we, we had that performance. So this will be able to go uh, you know not just quickly in a straight line but around the turns just as fast as uh, other cars uh, in the race? Oh absolutely I mean in fact our simulation work um, has shown us that we really are extremely fast and in fact uh, we'll probably have to tone down the performance a little bit um, to meet the requirements of the ACO. Obviously, there's a, a very specific uh, speed requirement for the Garage 56 uh, entrant, and we, we intend to fall exactly in their speed uh, parameters, if you see what I mean. Now, the whole idea behind this, besides uh, being extremely aerodynamic, also extremely light, about half the weight of the typical uh, prototype cars that uh, race at Le Mans, you're also going to be using a much smaller, uh, lower power, but more fuel-efficient engine? That's right. Um, I suppose that the technology is really not very extreme in any particular area. We're going to use a conventional four-cylinder um, internal combustion engine, turbocharged, um, using modern turbo technology and direct fuel injection, which is another very um, impressive leap in efficiency. But essentially, it's a standard 1600 that we've all seen around for many years. The car is extremely light, and that's one of its advantages, and it has very low drag. And when you put all of these elements together, and you're not constrained by the typical um, regulations of motorsport today that very much ensure the car is inefficient to make sure that it's not too fast, um, suddenly we have a, an incredible performance story, and uh, this is our opportunity to showcase what can be done outside conventional regulations, uh, very much relevant to the consumer and the auto industry in terms particularly of fuel burn. Now, aside from uh, yourself, uh, obviously from the accent, this is pretty much an all-American effort. Delta Wing Racing, uh, based in Indianapolis. The car's going to be built by Dan Gurney's All-American Racers out in California. And then Highcroft Racing here in Connecticut is going to be the ones actually fielding the team. Uh, also, uh, Dan Panos, who runs the American Le Mans Series, involved in the effort. Uh, as far as the engine is concerned, I know you're looking at a number of different manufacturers. Do you want something unique to this car, or do you want to find a racing engine, a four-cylinder racing engine that uh, is already out there that will work in your car? And is it important that it's an American uh, engine. I think we all want it to be an American engine. Um, it doesn't have to be unique to the car. Um, in fact, 
I think it's fair to say that virtually every auto manufacturer in the entire world has a 1600cc turbo either already uh, on, uh, in the showrooms or um, about to hit the showrooms. So, you know, we, we were very careful in choosing the appropriate powertrain to make sure that we were truly relevant to uh, the, the future of the auto industry. So what's the ultimate goal for this? I mean, originally you wanted to make it a spec chassis, sell the cars to Indy uh, car, you know, they'd have 30 cars and the race is 33 in Indianapolis, that sort of thing. Uh, as far as now, are you looking for a racing series like uh, the American Le Mans series to maybe create a class for these cars or maybe figure out a way to work them into the current uh, prototype class uh, and then become a, a manufacturer for other teams? Or is this really just a one-off effort to prove the technology? Uh, the first step, of course, is um, a one-off to prove that we can do what we say. Um, and if, then one of the uh, sort of endearing parts of this story, if you like, is that a lot of people don't believe the car will go around a corner. And you know, we haven't forgotten to make a car that goes around, goes around a corner, but I guess uh, at Le Mans next year, every, the world will see whether we were right or not. But um, obviously, the concept is, as we say, very strong, and it's, um, it fits with the global auto industry's um, direction towards a, a boosted, turbo-boosted, um, small capacity, direct injection, liquid fuel, internal combustion engine, and I think we'll find that uh, the racing that the cars um, can uh, perform on track is very exciting. I mean, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for overtaking. We worked on a lot of different areas with the car, particularly aerodynamically, and it's a natural fit for an ALMS or um, uh, some other series um, around the world, and I think that um, there is a great opportunity in the future, after we've been to Le Mans, after we've showcased the car, to spawn the next uh, level of um, high-efficiency uh, motorsport, cost-effective as well. Is Le Mans going to be the de debut for the car, or are you going to try to put it into a race before that? Well, from a personal standpoint, I'd love to see the car run as a prelude to Le Mans at the Sebring 12-hour race. Um, that would be brilliant for the drivers to have experience of passing other cars and being passed and so on. Um, get the, the team up to speed in the pit, make sure we understand the, the way that the car uses its tires when there's other traffic um, putting rubber on the track and so on. So it would be really good for us, and we will be ready to do the 12 hours of Sebring. We've put it in our schedule, but we're very much um, we're wanting to work with the ACO in France and make sure that um, that's acceptable to them and it fits with their schedule and so on. When are we going to see a complete prototype on the track uh, for its first test? Um, well, it'll be before the end of the year, so it's not that long to wait. And from my point of view, it's way too soon because we've got an awful lot of work to do. But no, we will see the car in, uh, in, at the end of the year. Uh, well, I'm not a racing driver myself, but I have driven a Formula One car about 25 miles without spinning or crashing it. And I really am dying to see how this thing uh, drives uh, as far as the dynamics are concerned. So I'm hoping to get an invite uh, to give this thing a try one of these days. Well, I, I, you and me both, I think um, it's a very exciting car to drive. You know, we used uh, a lot of simulation tools and put Scott Pruitt in the car, uh, in the simulation, obviously, and uh, got his feedback on how the car felt. We drove it around uh, mid-Ohio. We drove it around many different tracks. And uh, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a very exciting car to drive. It has a very wide operating envelope, and it has a great deal of intrinsic stability, contrary to how it looks. And um, so for a driver, there's a massive opportunity to explore the limits and, um, you know, make overtaking moves that perhaps with a conventional car would be actually quite, quite difficult to achieve, um, simply because of the lack of stability from the rear end of a traditional rear engine racing car. All right, Ben Bowlby, Delta Wing Racing, thanks for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks very much. One, one word for that, neato. You know, I don't yeah. know if it works. I'm looking forward to finding out if it works, but that's just neat. When's the last time you saw a new racing car that was that cool, that much different than what we have on the road today? Well, I'm Probably the six-wheel Terrell back in the yeah, 70s, I'm right? I'm agreeing with you. I'm old enough to remember things like the Chaparral moments, the turbine moments, the six-wheel moments. This is a game changer, and, and it's a challenge for racing people to get over the looks. I mean, the days of Ferrari styling a great race car and thinking it's fast are gone. Functional design is what it's all about. This is a real test of it doesn't matter what it looks like, does it race? The things he said at the end are really, really intriguing to the, the ex-driver in me. I'm very curious what the dynamics are of really wheeling this thing through corners. Does it do something different than a normal race car in corner in? What's it mid-corner? And when he started suggesting that there are places to pass that wouldn't be normal in a normal car, 
Wow. Yeah, exactly, because that's one of the big problems in racing these days is uh, just because of the aerodynamics, it is difficult to get close enough to somebody to pass them. And then when you do make the move, like Alan McNish, <laughs> you get yourself in a little bit of trouble. But that's different. More of a problem with Formula One, uh, but definitely something to think about. And, you know, I don't know how exactly aerodynamic that is. Actually, I think the CD is something like point. Two four. CDs. And the typical winged racer is up in the ones. I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, bad. The, the CD it's is all about downforce. Well, the CD is right. low because there is no wing. He's making all the downforce there, which is going to create less of a wake behind the car, which probably could make closer operating work. And he's really kind of ranting on about the rear stability of this car taking a set. So. It could be good. Interesting stuff. Not going to be the only new thing at Le Mans next year. Uh, there's also going to be a fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell powered electric car, as well as another, I think, battery powered electric car. I guess they're going to be doing swaps, battery swaps during the race, or that's what they're hoping yeah. to do. Yeah, Courage is doing an all-electric battery swap. Um, Green GT is the one that's got a heart hydrogen platform, a solar cell, solar panel, converts water to power. But what I understand is that there's only one Garage 56 entry. 55 cars get invited to Le Mans. This is the 56. I think Delta Wing has that invitation in hand. Mm -hmm. It's theirs to lose. I think the other two are either kind of on a waiting list or there's 57 and 58. So Delta's in. You know, it might be difficult to have more than one experimental car on the track might cause some problems with the other drivers, but that said, why not just do it? Get the three in there. Why make them wait? Well, the Porsche Hybrid, the 911, mm -hmm. it's been working. I mean, they seeded qualifying at Petit Le Mans to make sure the real race went on, but they ran their laps and validated the test of concept. So why not have it happen here? Yep.